So let's epoxy. The epoxy is now dry. It's very secure. It doesn't go up or down, side to side. So that's all good. So now what we'll do, we put some of the dielectric grease on the connectors, heat seal them, and I just have a like aim and flame. I didn't buy a heat gun. Uh, I thought about getting like a candle so I don't have to keep this thing lit for so long. But that's something, if you don't want to buy a heat gun, you can use a candle. They last pretty long, constant heat source, so you could hold it over the candle, but this should work for direct heat. And then uh, we'll epoxy them into place. You gotta make sure they line up with everything in here. Somehow make this go into place. I don't, I'm not too sure yet. That might be. Gotta make sure that screw hole is accessible. And I mean, you can see where the old stuff was. This whole area should be fine to attach stuff. So here is the projector all mounted up. I tested it, kind of. I hooked the high beam up and I heard a noise and a light came on and then I disconnected it because it was just leads and it, it was a little scary, gonna be honest. So it works, I'm pretty sure. Got the other one mounted up as well. So these are all secure, ready to go. I've tightened down all the nuts and the bolts, the locking nuts. Everything's good. I ran the high beam wire out. This wire will be going down on the bottom of this cap. There's a rubber grommet. Um, I'm leaving it off until I'm ready for it. I put the I put the bulb in. What? Uh. Anyway, and I also modified the cap. I drilled a hole. So as you can see in this one, I left this out just to show y'all. So. There was a defined circle where that outline is. You can still kind of see it. It's look like that. But basically, that's pretty much the correct size you need for these rubber grommets to go in. These are Morimoto XB HIDs. So I can't vouch for any other brands, but that's the ones I got. They pretty much slide right in. Make sure the two empty holes, because they come with four wires in this gray and black set is if you have another headlight in here that has an internal plug this would be ran to that but you don't need it so you can literally cut them and pull them through and you don't need these anymore so you can toss them save them sell them i don't really care so this is all you'll need because this would be for the high beam which is when the another projector would come on but since these are by xeon i think is why but we just have one, so we have a high beam that inside makes the solenoid just flip down or go down or something. So even though it flips down, the light's flipped, so it makes a high beam. Physics or science. But yeah, that's that. It's pretty easy. They say 22 millimeters. I just cut out that circle. It, it looked big enough. Then you just run run the wires through like so. And then um, what I like to do, I like to push this whole grommet through and then tuck in the flap from the outside because you get to, gives you a little bit more room around the side to work. So that's what I did with that. It'll be fine. Uh, I'm not too worried about replacing bulbs because if it blows, I worse comes to worse, I take that lights off. Back to where we were. Let's do the LEDs. So here we are, a little bit change of background. This is my floor, I'm on a rug because you know, the Tigers are playing. I'm trying to finish up today, let's get it. Quick bench test because who knows what the dielectric might do. And before I heat shrink, I just wanna double, triple check, make sure everything works before I heat shrink it. Cause I don't feel like cutting off heat shrink. Even though it probably won't take long to plug it up. And also this whole clicking rectifier, I don't wanna start my car up and the turn signals don't work. You know, that just doesn't sound very uh, fun to me. Don't hear it clicking, that's good. Let's go to the app, there it is. I don't know what that is. Pair, let's go. So let's do kaleidoscope. See, this is why we test. So this side's all good. Let's see what the problem is. Also this lighting is not ideal, but not my apartment. It's like it might not have been snug. Again, simple plug and unplug. See if I heat shrink that, couldn't have unplugged it and plugged it back in. 
so that's why we test. Now everything works as it should and we can go ahead and heat shrink it up. I think we can attach these to the lenses up there and then we may be able to put them together tonight. Also heat shrink is boring so if you don't know how look it up it's very easy. Cleaning up these channels and on the lenses there's there's still some butyl which is this gray stuff. There's a I'll link a video to what I watched but basically what you do you get a flathead that's the same width as the channel heat up to where it's like stringy um, so I did 225 at 10 minutes that seemed to be good it was liquidy take that screwdriver press it down in the channel run it along and make it flat and even and that'll give it just kind of push it all down to the bottom because it'll it's like putty it'll grab and peel up so you can take it off that way too but it was a light works video so I'm gonna link that in the description if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, that's important process for putting on the retro rubber so yeah let me get this all buttoned up oh uh issue i did have so i put these in the lens already but right here there's just the slightest part rubbing on the lens itself pressing up against it because you could tell when something's pressed up against something clear and honestly i'm just gonna say send it it'll work itself out we still got a lot to do so a little bit later in the day and heat shrink is done I also tested them, everything works as it should, so don't have to redo anything. But as you can see, nice and sealed up. Yeah, we did have to use electrical tape on the right side. Yeah, we're just gonna leave it. Um, this kit came with, I think this is half inch, but it's still not big enough. And the store's closed. I could wait till tomorrow, but I mean, I should do it the right way. I'll just do the adhesive on this one first, get these all in place, and then we'll see where we're at and uh, what I feel like doing. I went to get more heat shrink because, you know, as you saw, I kind of ran out of it. And I realized I couldn't put it on because I already heat shrink the connectors. So um, I'm dumb. But it's been all day pretty much epoxying wires onto boards. So, you know, there's nothing loose on them or anything and the only challenge I'm having is these wires. I wish these wires weren't long. I'm sure I could cut them, solder them. That's a lot of work. I'm just gonna leave them because there's, if you look, there's space at the bottom which is where all that will live. It's right below that. Why do more work than is required? So what I'm thinking about doing is drilling some holes. So you got your screw holder to mount it to the lens, but drilling two holes like here and here, and then here and here. And like zip tying, I got bead wire, um, doing something like that. Because, you know, wherever these holes are, you're not gonna see that. That's all hidden when you install it. Figure that'd be quick and easy and secure and no hassle or anything. So that's what I'll do. But we have some things to cross off our list. Also found out, so I use electrical tape, right? Electrical tape will shrink when you apply heat, just like heat shrink. So I'm sure in the oven it'll get a little bit tighter. So that'll be good. So heat shrink, wires. Let me drill those holes. Yeah, those will all be buttoned up. And this is just gonna flop around. I don't, I don't know. I also tried adhesive double-sided like 3M tape and it didn't really work so zip ties it is all right so i just used bead wire is this stuff right here got it at walmart it's like a buck it doesn't stretch you want something that doesn't stretch did one here and did one there so that's and then tied it down pretty good with a good knot i just used like a square knot and a square knot on a square knot on a square knot did it over here this still wiggles which I'm gonna add some wire there so that way it doesn't wiggle. Because if the connection's weak, but it's stable, like like say a solder point was barely touching, right? But it didn't move, that's gonna always work. But if it, the solder point's barely touching, but then you wiggle it back and forth, it's gonna cause problems down the road. So as long as all the wires are secure and don't wiggle, there's not gonna be any issues because nothing's gonna, there's a term, but Nothing's gonna wear out, right? There's no wear point anywhere for it to happen. That's not really an issue because this is all down. And this 
is also epoxied right there, so we're good with that one. Um, these will just flop around. They're not necessary. We could cut them off, but yeah, we'll just leave them in the back. That one's good. I still got to do that one. Seal them up. That's that. And then I guess while they're cooling down, we can solder up the extension. And then tomorrow I'll install them. Ex Except Tropical Storm Beta is coming. It's going to rain for the next two days. And... My car is parked outside. I don't have a garage or a covered area that I can go. So I uh, wanted to install it today, but that's not gonna happen. Worst case, I wait a couple days. Best case, I can, cause I can buy a covered spot. Cause we have like a parking garage here at my apartment place. It'll be a couple days before I can install it. But that'll give me time to waterproof the Blue Ghost and all that. Cause I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna leave it in the engine bay. Don't know where. Uh, I also need to get stuff to pot it. Uh, apparently there's a special type of epoxy that doesn't trap heat, which you don't want things to overheat, so. But for now I'm just gonna tape up all the seams, you know, real good, so nothing gets in it. And uh, that'll be that. Tomorrow I'll check the engine bay after I drive through the rain and all that, for dry spots to see what part doesn't get hit by water, so that'll be that. But tonight... We're gonna pretty much finish everything, seal it up, make the extension, and test, and that'll be that. Uh, what are closures? closures? I don't know. I don't know what closures is. Closures. Oh, I know. <laughs> These things, the caps. We got both of them done. If you didn't see that, just go back and look for it. I don't, I don't know if it's in this video or the last video, but the other thing we have to do with that is the high beam coming out of the bottom, which we'll do after it comes out of the oven, after we seal it. And then also, this is where I plan the LED to come out of, because that's where the blinker goes. And I forget how it is now, but... Oh, I think it was inside. That kind of sucks. Anyway, I'll figure it out when I put it on, but... You know, water can get in. You want holes. Oh, I might need to do vent holes. You want holes so water can escape, go in and do all that good stuff. Because if not, you seal it, and that humidity in there is forever in there, no matter what the humidity is outside. So you want breathers, and it's gonna get hot. So you do need air, but you don't want like holes where like tons of water can get in. You just want the vapors. So that's what uh, these are. These are like one-way things. So four dots allows water vapor to escape, but not go in. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So this will just tape up with probably duct tape. I don't care about the looks of that. And I don't know. I need to see the connection on the car. This is what came off the car. And I'll use this as to connect to there for like the left and right turn signals. But this is what came out and it plugs into the, this is like a bulb connector kind of. And then it twists and seals in. So <sighs> I might just take that turn signal bulb out, seal it up, and then make it come out of the other. I'm gonna have to do some digging tonight. Because in that case, we'll pull this epoxy up. I'm sure I can peel it off or cut it or something. Because right now it's, because right now it's wired up like this. So it goes out that hole. But I could try to make it go out the top hole. And then out the bottom of this, right there. Which that would be a lot smaller of a hole and it's pointing down. Now the LED lead won't fit through those two holes, but it'll fit out that hole. And that hole would be a lot easier to tape up than the blinker hole. Now that I'm talking about this, that makes a lot more sense. So if you recall from the first or second video when I pulled these all apart, I told you to hang on. I do want to save at least this bit. This connector is what you want. On the back of the headlight you have like three holes. You got this hole which is where your turn signal plugs in and twists. You have this which is your headlight and this which can also be another headlight because I think they have two different designs. So one has two projectors, one has one. I don't know. There, This one wasn't being used when I got it. This comes out like that. How it comes from you know the factory. But this is what we need to go to the blue ghost so we can have a one cleaner install we don't have to t-tap any wires or splice wires or anything this will make it plug and play and b it'll just be easier what'll happen is this will stick out like so 
and then it'll run you'll have to extend this some so you'll need 22 or 24 gauge whatever it is but we'll run it inside out this hole with these wires through this cap uh, you don't have to drill this we're gonna remove the connector to fit it through which will be easy as you can see I started drilling this and I realized I could just remove the connector so now you're able to feed those through and you still have room for two wires so we only have three inputs, right? Left turn signal, right turn signal, and daytime running light, parking light. This gives us a ground, parking light, and a turn signal. Even though we're gonna use both, you only need three extra wires. That's what we need this. We'll cut it somewhere right about there and then extend it. Um, I'll probably do six feet just to give me some room. That will keep it easy. So when you make all these secure, you don't have to epoxy this um, LED cable. To this side you can just leave it right here to this side i'm going to undo all that oh but little dumb me has now tied this wire with the bead wire so i'm gonna have to redo that probably on both yep i hated doing that learn from my mistake 